and women look for their lost loves. The French poster declares it un monument, presumably a reference to one of the film's themes, the search for the corpse that will become the unknown soldier. But monument is also a term that could be applied to the film's star, Philippe Noiret. Life and Nothing But is Noiret's 100th film. His career began in the 1950s and flowered in the 60s in roles both subtly dramatic and extravagantly comic. But his best work has been for Tavernier. He was the lead in Tavernier's first film in 1974, The Watchmaker of St. Paul. Bertrand Tavernier talked to The Late Show in Paris about the unusual genesis of his latest film, his working relationship with Philippe Noiret, and the visual influences he drew upon to recreate a lost period in French history. The idea of the project, of the screenplay, started in the, my discovery of the figure, 350,000 missing person in 1920. Uh, the, the whole French army of today. That's the starting point. And I began to ask myself, who were those missing person. What is a missing person? How do you find a missing person? What are the reaction of a woman with trying, mostly the, the, the people looking where, where women, mother, wife, uh, sisters. search, that quest, uh, had to happen during another search for the unknown soldier. Il me faut un poilu inconnu, c'est votre truc. Non, mon général. Je vous l'ai déjà dit, je m'en tiens à ma mission. Les inconnus, non. Je suis chef du bureau de recherche ah, et d'identification des militaires tués. Disparu, en plein votre truc. Philippe Noiret was cast from the beginning. We wrote the part for him. It was his uh, 100 film, and he wanted to work with me. We had been very, very, very close together. And I wanted to get, give him a, a new challenge, to give him, he very rarely played uh, somebody from the army. Bien, mon général, je vais chercher. Non, on cherche pas, on trouve. Tout de suite. La note est du 3, nous sommes le 5. Euh, les corps issus des neuf régions militaires seront rassemblés dans la citadelle de Verdun au plus tard le, devinez, mardi 9 novembre 1920. Alors je le veux demain dans sa boîte avec les bordereaux, les tampons, les étiquettes et tout. Pas moi, mon général, s'il y a des fuites. Fuite Quoi fuite Quelle fuite Si un seul journal apprend le lieu de l'exhumation, mon général, votre mystère s'évapore. Et votre soldat inconnu ne représentera plus l'ensemble. Décidément, vous ne changerez jamais, hein, toujours d'affuser, allez foutez-moi le camp. Oui, mon I wanted to give him a character which would have, uh, which would be close to him and close to me, uh, because we are very much uh, like, alike, uh, which would have a kind of anarchistic approach, which would have uh, uh, um, somebody l lonely fighting against the hierarchy. So, but the character, the idea of the character came out of the background. I mean, what we did was uh, working, like, a little bit like Charles Holmes, working with some objects, some facts, some details, and building the story, the character, the emotion out of that. Voilà. Votre bleu clair, c'est du gris moyen. 
Bon, nous disons grande taille numéro 3, gris moyen, section F. Je peux vous aider Il m'arrive de chanter des obscénités, madame, mais je sais me comporter. We knew that we wanted to deal uh, with each emotion in an oblique way. For instance, talk of war in uh, uh, writing about peace, or to speak of love by showing uh, people looking for missing person, to, to speak of hope by showing the France after that war, showing France after and but we knew that it was going to be hopeful and sometimes very funny film. Ça va bien pour vous, non? La sculpture. Oh, L'âge d'or, mon cher ami. L'âge d'or. Jamais vu ça depuis les Grecs, depuis les cathédrales. Même ceux qui ont une main de merde ont de la commande. Vous vous rendez compte? Un monument par village, on fournit pas. 35 000 communes par 300 sculpteurs. Tout le monde veut son poilu, sa veuve, sa pyramide, ses marbres. La ronde bosse, le bas-relief, la lettre, alors là, tout ça ronfle comme une usine. Mieux que la renaissance, mon cher, la résurrection. Grâce à nos morts. <rire> Grâce à nos morts. Merci à eux. I like wide film. I like film where you have the, the wind, the rain, the... I mean, my, the people who I grew up with were John Ford, uh, were Anthony Mann, were people who, who had the feeling for scope. And I wanted to do a film uh, about intimate feeling in a very, very wide scope, with a wide canvas. I mean, this, this is Ford, too. I showed to my uh, operator, uh, she wore a yellow ribbon, and it's uh, astonishing how daring it, 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 it is. How the way that Ford, even for the time, was, was uh, filming the stars. I mean, John Wayne, I think he has a close-up after 89 minutes of film. Uh, he's always mostly in long shot or in medium shot, but practically never in, in close-up. So we decided to get that principle. Le génie a fait du bon travail. Il y a déjà une quarantaine d'exhumés, presque tous identifiés. Vous avez la liste nominative Oui, oui. Vous ventilerez sur les différentes unités, vous informerez les familles que nous avons ici. C'est prévu, mon commandant. Tout le monde doit passer au bureau. Vérifiez le nom et le prénom. Il y a des noms tellement répandus. Vous comprenez très vite. Les chiffres, on ne joue pas avec. C'est une question de... C'est mort. Voilà. C'est mort. Coutrel, la famille Coutrel est demandée au bureau d'identification. The other thing was the use of the color. I'd been working in the last films very much on the color. I mean, Sunday in the Country, uh, Round Midnight, Beatrice. And one of my great uh, influences is Michael Powell. So we watch again some of the technical films he made in the 40s. And I asked Bruno de Kese, I said, can we get that wonderful feeling of, uh, that you have in some of the shots where you get one specific color, very, very bright and clear, and the rest completely monochromatic, and in pastel, very, very soft, like uh, in Blimp, where you have some blacks of the tuxedo that you of the red of uniform, and all the rest, the furniture, the wall, the background, is very, very soft, and, uh, and, and it's, it's beautiful, and I think very much ahead of its time. Bruno, about one year before starting the film, began to make some tests in the lab. We built a special machine to, uh, to put, mix black and white in col and color, and it's how I got that image where the blue are very, very, very blue. 
And behind that, it's, uh, uh, it's less, all the other colors are less strong, are a bit diminished. And at the same time, it's a process which gives a lot of depth of focus, which I was looking for. It's, uh, it, was, it was very exciting, difficult to control on the set, especially when you are doing a film in eight weeks, entirely on location, uh, in the east of France in November and December, in the cold. And, and it was nearly a nightmare there. No. Ah, no. <laughs> un morceau pas trop gras. Voilà. La dame, là-bas. Madame, c'est de la part du commandant. Le soldat est comme un sac. Hein? S'il est plein, il tient le roux. Hein? S'il est vide, il se couche. Un sac vide, plouf. Un soldat qui n'a rien dans le ventre, plouf, il aime. De là, l'expression, il n'a rien dans le ventre. I like films which take that time. I like films which, which explore the characters, which explore a situation. I think direction is exploring. A lot of films are just touristic trip. I mean, they put you in a plane, and the only difference with another trip will be uh, the quality of the food of the film in the plane. But you know where you are going. You know that you are going to, uh, to New Delhi or to Boston, and it will be, you will reach it within seven hours, and, and you will be going over uh, such and such city. I like to go in some unknown lands, I, and I like the people to be puzzled, to be surprised, as I am surprised. Bertrand Tavernier talking about his legacy.